Hey, what is up, guys? I hope you're all doing well. I woke up about six o'clock this morning just to get to the Gwent patch, and I have been working for the last 12 hours. I don't plan on stopping anytime soon, so let's get right to this new Triss card and how it functions in the monster deck. All right, here we go. It's Triss Meteor Shower, a brand new card, and she is looking fly. Now, this is a very interesting card, and I'll explain why. If you play her on the range row, she will boost all allied units on a row by half their base power. Okay, that means the power they have right here at the top in its white form. That's the base power. Now, on the melee row, she will damage all units on an enemy row by half of their base power. So, this is quite an interesting phenomenon. Now, I thought, how would we get the most points out of a card that boosts cards by their base power? Well, it's going to be monsters, of course. Monsters have the chunkiest cards in the game, and surely this is the correct deck to play this in. Now, we did a lot of experimentation with this, and uh, Triss is interesting. I'll tell you why. So, let's start off with something as simple as Self Eater. If you play Self Eater, now don't get confused. You will halve the unit's base power if you click on it, and then spawn a copy with the same base power on that row. So, if Self Eater is 4 points, you will halve it, and it will now be 2 points. If Self Eater is 6 points, you halve it, it will be 3 points. But if it is an uneven number like 5, it will always round down. It will punish you. So, if you want to half a 5 point Self Eater, it will turn into 2 2 point Self Eaters. Meaning you lost 1 point right there. But... Uh, that basically means it halves down, right? Um, so what does that mean with Triss? Now, interestingly enough, Triss, Triss rounds up. So let's say you have a five point self eater on your side of the board and you want to boost all allied units on a row by half their base power. So according to this logic, the self eater is supposed to only boost by two points if it's a five. But it doesn't. It boosts by three points. It rounds up in your favor. I tried this on the melee row by damaging the opponent's self eaters. Same thing. If you damage your five point self eater, it will damage it by three points, not two. So for some reason, Triss always rounds up. And this is something you should just keep in mind. This can play for quite a bit of points. So all in all, this tends to be your normal relic deck. Now, Erendite has been changed to a 10 provision card, meaning you can't play it with the Golden Necker combo anymore. I played against people who did. Don't do it. Uh, golden Necker won't work. Remember, Golden Necker only works if all the cards in your deck are 9 provision or less. So another co uh, card that works like that uh, is going to be Surrey Nova. Don't include this in your deck. Only works if you only have 9 provision cards or less. So by including Erendite, we automatically forfeit the rights of playing any of those cards. Now, Erendite is still a great card. Erendite grows by one point every turn. You have more points on your side of the board than your opponent. So because we're playing monsters, we have a lot of tempo, meaning we play a lot of points pretty fast. So with Relics, we start off with something like Self Eater. You try and half this every time it's on an even base power, fill the whole board with it, and then every time you play a relic, every single one of those will boost themselves by one. So what are some relics we can play? Well, we have a Lesser Witch here. The Lesser Witch will spawn a base copy of itself in the graveyard. If you already have one of these on your side of the board, it will spawn a base copy of itself on the row instead, meaning it will play for 10 points. So if you play that... Um, this bug always gets me. Uh, if you play that with the mushy truffle, you will basically have a guaranteed 10 points, right? Uh, so that's quite nice. Mushy truffle will also spawn and play golden frost, giving you an extra 6 points. So, next up we have Gun Cayenne. Gun Cayenne will increase its base power by 2 for every relic on its side, meaning it can be 9 points altogether. Quite a nice card to have. You want to try and keep one Gun Cayenne in the graveyard and one in your deck. The same goes for Griffin. You have to choose between the two. Griffin, you want one in your graveyard and one in your deck. 
We normally start off with Griffin because our leader ability is Fruits of Isgith. So every time there isn't a Gurnikora fruit on your side of the board, you can spawn one with your leader ability at the start of the turn. So I normally start with one Fruits of Isgith and then I play the Griffin. The Griffin will destroy the fruits and next turn you get another fruit. It's pretty nice. So Mamuna is the card that we use these with and she is quite the point slam card. So Mamuna will banish a bronze unit from your graveyard and boost self by its power. So that will either be the 9 point Griffin or the 9 point Gun Cayenne. Then it will summon a copy of it from your deck to that row. So that's why it needs to be in your deck, right? Keep in mind that Sabbath means you have 25 cards on one of your rows, uh, 25 points uh, accumulated on one of your rows. So if you happen to have 25 points, she will play the card instead. So bear with me. You don't want to play Griffin ever uh, when you're pulling it out of your deck because you might not have the correct setup and Griffin will have to kill something. So you don't want to play Griffin after you have 25 points. But you do want to play Gankayen after you have 25 points. Because if you can actually play it, it will be able to increase itself to 9, the one that's still in your deck. So keep it like this. You want Griffin to pop out of your deck. You want Gankayen to be actually played from your deck so it gets its full potential. Other than that, we have our Witch Apprentices. If you have 25 or more on one of your rows, at the end of the turn, this card will boost itself by two. Quite nice to have. We also have Mega Scope. You can choose a bronze card with this, and you'll be able to spawn another copy of that card with the Mega Scope. So if you choose a Griffin, you get another nine point Griffin at the end of your next turn. If you choose Gan Yen, even though it's now a nine, the base copy of this card is five. Remember that. So if you use the Mega Scope on the Gan Yen, you're gonna get a five point Gan Yen, not a nine point Gan Yen. You'll make that mistake once, and then you won't make it again. So next up, we have Rat Catcherus. Whenever this unit is damaged, it will damage itself once again if you don't have Sabbath. So you want to preferably play this card after you already have Sabbath so it doesn't get double the damage essentially. Now whenever you play a Relic, this card will get one extra point. This is a nice card because it also literally increases its base power. So let's say you get this card up until it's 14. Well, what is Trish going to do? She's going to give it 7 more points. So that's pretty amazing and one of the reasons we went for this deck with Triss. Um, another card we have here is Incubus. It's a little bit of a tricky card uh, when you start off. So you summon a bronze unit from your opponent's graveyard. And you pick that card based on its provision cost. So here you can see this would be a 5. Then you summon a bronze unit of equal or less provisions from your graveyard. So the trick is to pick one of the biggest cards in your graveyard. Maybe you have multiple griffins because you used your mega scope. So you want to choose a 5 provision card from your opponent's graveyard. But you want to choose the weakest 5 provision card they have. Something that won't actually give them points. This is what's tricky and... Um, yeah, if you're a new player, I wouldn't be playing Incubus. But it is a relic, so it's nice to have. And if you can manipulate it, it's also quite nice. Alright, so next we have the Crones. Um, not this one. This is an Operator. Again, a bug. Sorry about that. So the Operator will spawn and summon a base copy of a bronze unit from your hand to this row on each player's side. So if you're not playing against monsters, you preferably want to spawn something like a Self Eater so you can have another one. Obviously, your opponent can't actually use the self-eater. It's basically useless if you're not playing relics. If you are playing relics, uh, maybe shuffle away your operator because you're just going to give your opponent a, uh, um, a relic as well, which isn't ideal. So then we have the crones. Of course, you know how this works by now. Whispers damages an enemy unit by two if you play it first. If you then play weavers, you can damage uh, boost an allied unit by four. Sorry. And if you have Brewer's Loss, you can consume three cards instead of one. They accumulate in value. Alright, so after that, uh, that's most of your basics. We have Spores to reset a unit's power, because we're definitely going to need it in the current meta. We also have Dark Grey. This will lock a unit, so it will stop it from doing what it's currently doing. So you want to use that on engines, preferably, that, that are getting out of hand. We also have Parasite, this will damage an enemy unit by 6, or boost one of your own cards by 6. You have the choice. 
Normally, I'd say we probably use it on an enemy unit if necessary, but it's completely up to you depending on the circumstances. There we have summoning circle. Now, apparently this is still bugged. What that means is, when you play this card, it will look at units in your deck in the order from top to bottom. So, like Maxi, it will literally show you in the correct order what you're going to be drawing. Which is very, very powerful. Because knowing what you'll be drawing and when is super, super important. So, summoning circle on its own is still a must include in my opinion. Then you can choose any card from your deck. A unit, that is. And this card will set its counter to that card's provision cost. So, if you chose this one, which is 8, it will have an 8 point counter. Then, at the end of every turn, it will remove a point from the counter for every card to its side. So if this card has no cards to its side, the counter won't go off. If it has one card, it will go off once every turn. If it has another card, it will go off twice every turn. So this card has resilience, meaning you can still use it into the next round, but only into the next round. So you want to make sure you're either using this to get ahead in this round, so you have to time it so the counter goes off completely, or you're ahead by so many points, you purposely play this in such a manner that it counts slowly so that you will have it in the next round and then the part, uh, the card pops out. So it's sort of um, carryover value you have instead. Summoning Circle, amazing. You should definitely keep that in your deck. So, of course, uh, that is basically it. Again, we do have Erendite. This card is still pretty strong. It will boost itself by one point every single turn. You have more points than your opponent. And you can play it twice. So, yeah, very strong in round three and round two. And then, lastly, because we don't have tutors in this deck, it really wasn't that necessary. We did include the Curse Scroll. So, if you're blue coin, you will be able to draw any card in your deck that you missed. And then you can put any card you don't want in your hand at the bottom of your deck. Normally when I have to pick, sometimes I'll either pick the Griffin or Gun Cayenne. Because you don't want that in your hand when you are playing Mamuna. You want one in your graveyard and that's it. You don't want two by accident. So that's pretty much how this deck works. Now, I really hope you do enjoy it. You can experiment with Triss uh, as much as you'd like. I had quite a bit of fun playing her myself and... Uh, yeah, I will be around with more decks soon, my friends. After this, I will be going to bed. But enjoy the video. Ah, Muramat. Me Maybe they'll try something similar? Alright, let's go. So, we're going first, which is great for our Erendite. We've got Mamuna. Two South Eaters, one Griffin, one Gun Cayenne. This is actually not a bad starting hand at all. We also have Curse Scrolls, so we can basically get anything we need. I'd say the biggest card we're missing... Probably just Triss. I'm quite happy with this. That's one... Yeah, that's, that's better. Okay, Fruit. Griffin. Stay ahead. Does the boost round up or round down? Yeah, so weirdly enough, when I play Triss, if if I boost my cards, it rounds up. Which isn't the case with Self Eater, which rounds down, right? So Self Eater on 5 will round down to 2 if you have it. Whereas with Triss, it will give Self Eater 3 points of boost. So... Very interesting. I'm curious to see if I damage my opponent's side of the board, if they will also round up or round down. Just like in Latin America. What about Triss with that 18 point card and the one that puts resilience on the biggest ally unit? You mean she who knows? Uh, what will be next? I'm thinking potential Megascope. Play one of these. What will we draw? Again, I I'm pretty content with our hand, all in all. I guess we want Triss just to try her. We got a pretty good hand. I think Self Eater was modified on purpose to nerf it. Ah, there are similar cards that do similar things, and I'm trying to recall what those cards are. 
because we've discussed this before. I specifically remember having a conversation like this with CDPR, and there was a logical explanation for it. A similar card. But I can't recall for the life of me what that card is. I uh, guess it's time for Self Eater. Uh, Melero. Yeah. They say you are what you eat. It always rounds up based on the card's description. The action described in the Self Eater card is half the unit's base power, so it rounds up when it halves. I'm so dumb, GSD. When it tries finish. to boost, it runs up as well. Some card is a benefit, some is not. Alright, next up it should be uh, Ratcatcheress, I guess. Though Ratcatcheress is more ideal later. Uh, it depends if we want round control. We're playing the same deck here. So if I play a Brewers, that should technically just be enough. <laughs> I think I'm going to draw Triss in exchange for Gun Cayenne so it doesn't break with Mamuna. Yeah, Self Eater rounds down when it halves, but it rounds up when Triss is used. We stall allied units on a row by half their base power. Damage all units on an enemy row by half their base power. Half this unit's base power. You see what I'm saying? It's the same wording as far as I can tell. What's with the new setup? <laughs> Is it too much? No, so, um, I mean, obviously, I, when I'm in South Africa, I have my normal setup. When I'm here, I had a setup. But then, I got this amazing... Wait. I got the Valve Index headset, which is, like, the best one on the market. And I'm so excited to give it a try. But I need more space to play it, so we took those the PC down to the studio where uh, Jimmy tends to film some reacts and stuff like that because uh, there's just way more space here to run around and make a fool of myself so I'll just be streaming here from now on uh, so they're gonna get another griffin do I get a head I sure do uh, boost an allied unit by four or play a rat catchers it's a bit more commitment than I was okay with, in all honesty. I probably did it more for Aaron Light than anything else. I likely pass after this. I mean, I could very well play Triss at this point, but it's useless because, again, it's a mirror match. What's the point? Okay, well, in all fairness, they do get ahead here, which isn't great. Okay, I have an idea. Okay. If they play another card, I will play Tress on the melee row and show you the damage and we can see whether it runs up or down. Uh, Sambu, thank you for the follow. What kind of mic is that? Uh, it's a, a sure, a blue. So it says blue, if you can see there. And then here it says sure, SM7B. It's, it's rather nice. I think it's better than my blue Yeti. 
It's not a blue yeti. Is it? No, it would say so. No, it's not a blue yeti. It doesn't sound like a blue yeti. And I believe I have an Elgato camera, which isn't bad. Okay, guys, are we going to test this for the memes? So here is a self-eater at five. Will they round it down by... Or will they round it down or will they round it up? According to the way trust boosts, they should damage it by three instead of two. But maybe they're more lenient. Let's see. I will not let this become a second side. Minus three. So they round up as well as the damage. So it was a five point card and self eater halves itself on five by minusing three points. That's exactly what she just did. Did they just rage quit? That can't be a, that can't be a coincidence. Why would they rage quit though? I'm, no? They didn't. Okay, I was just about to say, there's no reason to rage quit. If anything, I just overcommitted and they can pass. Maybe rounds up on boosting and down on damage. Well, <sighs> the thing is, if I boosted Myro, a five point self eater would have gotten three points as well. So. The wording is interesting regarding Triss and Self Eater, is all I'm saying. Okay, so I guess we could try and 2 0 them for funsies. We have Mamuna. Uh, chances are they can't catch up in time, and we have Erendite as well. Is she a real Gwen card working? Not currently. I don't have a real Gwen card on me, unfortunately. Uh, what are we missing? Potential summoning circle and mushy. Nice. Oh, this is definitely a potential 2-0, I think. Uh, Smidge, it's okay, don't worry. Um, Twitch automatically has a certain level of security embedded uh, in, the, in the system, so they'll just block certain words out. Is the decklist posted? Yeah, but weirdly enough, there's um, there's a bug. So, if you click on the list, you will see that they um, they say we have two provisions too many, when in fact we don't. So, Mega Scope is four provisions, but in the deck list it says it's five. So, weird bug, um, you'll have to just manually make the deck, but that is the deck. Now imagine if they play Triss. I'll be kind of screwed here. At least Erendite's gonna be massive for round 3. Ethereal, ah, oh, you love to see it. Honestly, this is what makes the start of a patch so much fun. People just play the weirdest cards out there. It's amazing. Obviously, we can't allow that, so. Is this the wiggle deck? Yes, it's the wiggle deck. <laughs> Meme de <laughs> denied, no fun allowed. I mean, the CDPR did destroy this card. It was fun while it lasted. I remember Lionheart and I revealed this on our channel, and I recalled, uh, I recall myself asking Ryan beforehand, Ryan, this will just continue transforming, right? It, it says transform card to the right, like it will just continue doing that automatically, and he's like, yes. And that didn't last very long, unfortunately. Yeah, this is completely nuked into oblivion. Because back in the day, you had to deal with every single ethereal, not just one. Or they just keep on doing what they're doing. Okay, Megascope the 9. 
What type of coffee is that? So it's a it's a Starbucks caps capsule. A uh, capsule, capsule, capsule. My English is failing me here. So um, it I just got it here in America to be honest. Carryover or more drastic measures? Okay. Yeah, Griffin is going to hurt just a bit. I think we go for the Echo card now. This must suck for you. <laughs> I could always go for the fruit. And deny thriving. Because they already have one now. I mean, if all goes well, this is basically just the 2-0. K-cup? I don't know what that means. Is it tasty? It is tasty. That's almost as bad as German saying squirrel. And save me some time. I mean, I did try. I tried. I guess this is us passing. What do we have left? Mushy and summoning. There's no pushing. Erundite's probably going to win us the game. That's what I hope. Nice. How's the patch? I'm enjoying it. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So... I guess Spores is probably getting thrown out here. Just feels like a massive risk. Like, what could they possibly have? Mamuna? I somehow... They can't. They have Golden Necker, so that's not a thing. Okay. Uh, I think we take this. So we're going to use Operator to play Lesser Witch. We're going to play Lesser Witch again. We're going to play Lesser Witch again. So that's 10, 10, and then Erendite. We just have to get ahead as quickly as possible. So probably going to kill that. Uh, deny Sabbath, I guess. So we play this on the range row. Hopefully they don't play it. In some African language? You mean Afrikaans? Um... Ek is a vreselike, gelukkige meisie wat lewe in a wonderlijke land, maar ek gaan die land verlaat vir a beter land. In before the most random Azrael shows up. No. Ouch. Look, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. I feel like we, we kill South Eater. Uh, same pie. Thank you for the follow. Yeah, we just do that, I guess. No. I don't trust it. See, there they lost one point. Easy clap. Hell yeah. Just to see how much it would have been. Nicely done. I'd say it would be a must if the meta remains the way it is. Oh, another square to match up. Uh, Apricot, GG. Well played. I love that deck. It's extremely strong. I couldn't keep up. Okay. 
So get rid of Incubus. Get rid of Megascope. Get rid of Megascope. That's a lot of funny that one of your stream categories is women. <laughs> yeah, we changed it. It was kind of a meme at first. Uh, we were looking... We were discovering what tags were. Because none of us knew that tags were a thing. And then we looked at all the different tags you can add. It's hilarious. And then we saw one of the tags that a lot of females have is women. <laughs> so I now I'm a woman in my tag. So uh, self eater concentrate here. I always say something cringy at the start of a game and realize I can't place this game in a deck guide now because I said something. <laughs> Now I have to edit that out and play another game. <laughs> I thought you were lifting Pixie and was just the sweater. <sighs> no, too soon. Uh, let's see, how about a rat catcher's? What are we missing? Mamuna. Let's draw Mamuna in exchange for a Gun Kayan. Pretty nice, because now we're guaranteed a Gun Kayan and we won't draw into the other one. Uh, are we just going to keep this for now, or else Giant Slayer just kills it? Just mute the audio and do voiceover. <laughs> yeah, maybe. We'll see. We ju we first have to win. Those are the rules. You c you can't put a deck guide in if you don't win. <laughs> in this time, it's crucial not to lose your head. <laughs> Wait, two giant slayers? Unacceptable. You can always dub yourself saying something else in the edit. Yeah, just have my mouth moving and saying something entirely irrelevant. <laughs> Ouch. Err. <laughs> Click and eat, maybe? Never ever whistle in a mind. Yeah, this is... This is a lot of tempo as well, actually. Ouch. Alright, so we'll do this. And this. Okay, now we have an engine as well. Aaron died currently at 5. I could get rid of the barricades, but they'll just give it more. Nice. Okay, so this one won't get resilience. Next up, our... Uh, Boost an allied unit by four. Well, on the plus side, we've got a 10 point self eater ready to come out of the deck at any moment. So that's great for us with either Mamuna or with Incubus. Likely gonna be Incubus. Let's see. Yeah, Giant Slayer is a six, so if we get that out, it's pretty much useless in a later round. Nice. Okay, full on dwarf stack then. Uh, I am in trouble. Yeah, it's just enough. One point. Oh no, actually, at two points, uh, if they pass. I mean, three. Maybe none too tall. Back to back stops as well as any other. I mean, they are committing a bunch. 
So, it's probably time for Triss. Right now, this South Eater is going to boost by 6. Gan Kai Yen is going to boost by 5. You know what I'm thinking, right? I feel like it's a must. Not too shabby. We out. <laughs> we we out. Nice card, yeah, right? Triss just fits in the stick. Why aren't I consuming fruits? Uh, if the fruit was bigger than Triss, that would have been a misplay. It could, uh, it could also have been. I wasn't sure if I was going to pass or not, so. I didn't want to give them too tall a target. And then decided I was gonna play Triss anyway. Long story, long story. But yeah, you you tend to consume the fruit when it is just, just too big to be triggered by a uh, Thrive. Because Crone had like two charges left, I think. Okay, so Parasite damage an enemy by six. That will come in handy, but Aerondite right now is even better. Mamuna will be played on Self Eater 100%. Let's do this. Okay, that's fine. They're gonna push. What? Okay, that's acceptable. So what, you're gonna brew her? Oh, Pratiki, thanks for the follow. Ah, oh, 10 points. Yeah, uh, definitely gonna brew her. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been super funny if this row was filled and I played Operator? I just realized I can't play Operator. That's great stuff. Great stuff. Uh, are you from France? Uh, ça va très bien, merci. And toi? A world. Well, there goes my carry over. So Markham Guard, damn. Right. What am I left with? Uh, lock, I guess. We'll keep operator? No. We'll, th we'll throw Operator. We're so far ahead. An American? I'm not an American. How are they gonna play Bruver? I don't know really. They have the leader. Barclay, I guess. Okay. Weird push. Weird push. I guess they realize we're stronger off in a short round. Uh. It's kind of close. But it's an automatic win. She's Brazilian. <laughs> no. They play Bruva round one. Oh, I completely forgot about that. Matters not. Breathe around one. Why did I like completely miss that? This isn't the dwarf, the first dwarf match we played today, so it might be that I just confused it. 